dear friends, it's a very special day for me. In fact, I had uh, already committed to some other program, so I was very disturbed when, when suddenly Ranjit said there is a program and, and Cochlear had organized this. But then I made it a point to be here because I don't, really don't want to miss this program for, for anything at all. When, uh, when you're full of emotions, you have very few words. In fact, right now, that's my state. I have been with all of you during your difficult times. I have shared your, your pain, your problems. And now I see the joy and happiness. And I share that too with all of you. And I take great pride. I mean, just to see KCF playing that, I had tears in my eyes. What else can I say? And just now, Afrina's parents are coming and talking to me. Afrina has a double problem. Apart from her hearing, she had also a visual problem. But her hearing is now excellent, and she talks so well. And as usual, like all daughters, she's still bossing her dad, and the father is enjoying it. You know, so I'm so happy to see these sort of issues. Each, every family, every one of you have had problems, have had real issues, difficulties in life, but you've had the courage to overcome those problems. See, when we have problems in life, there are two kinds of reactions. One reaction is, you know, we blame it on God, we blame it on karma, we blame it on this, we blame it on that, and accept it. That is a normal, average human reaction. The second problem, second reaction is to say, what the hell, you know, I'm not going to fall, I'm going to fight and come up. And that is uh, the reaction that every one of you showed. And because of that, today, there is joy in your lives, joy in every one of you, and joy for people like me when I see this happiness. So I really am touched, I'm really moved. This is a, a completely impromptu uh, arrangement, where, but a wonderful arrangement by the company, and I'm really happy that this has happened. And I really wish this will happen more often. That's the only request I have for cochlear. As you all know, the field of cochlear implants is rapidly developing. So many changes are happening. So the natural question which will come is, my child had an implant, say, eight years ago, nine years ago, 10 years ago. Much newer implants have come now. So many generations of new implants have come. So where does it leave my child? You know, is it that we are now outdated in our technology? New technology has come. The good thing is that new technology is coming. And even better is the fact that most of these new technologies are backward compatible, which means that you can use this technology on previous generation also. So it doesn't mean that we have to reoperate, take the implant and put a new implant. That electrode which is inside is the same, but the, the, the technology which couples with that externally is compatible with even the previous generation implants. So that's a good thing about it. The second very important development, I would say, is our understanding of hearing is also changing. You see, when we started cochlear implants in 96, 97, we had a lot of wrong ideas, even we had. We professionals had wrong ideas. For example, one idea that we had was that if a child has a very severe hearing loss, we should still give a hearing aid, not an implant. That was the wrong idea because we now know that the benefit they got from a hearing aid was much less than what they would get from an, a cochlear implant. The second big mistake we had was we said that if you put a cochlear implant, then existing hearing will no longer function. This also is not true. We have today technology by which if somebody has some hearing, 
we can still put a cochlear implant and preserve that hearing. It's also possible. The third very big mistake we made then, I'm talking about the 90s, was that we believed that if somebody used a, a hearing aid in one ear and a cochlear implant in the other ear, the two will not go together. This was, a, in fact, I have myself told patients this, you know, because that was our belief then. It was a genuine scientific belief. Very soon, it was shown that this was nonsense. The brain is so adaptable that it can balance the two to the extent that even if somebody has normal hearing in one ear and no hearing in the other ear, we can still do an implant in the ear with no hearing and they will benefit. So this brings the next question. If my child has cochlear implant in one ear, should I do the other ear? Okay. The answer is definitely yes. It's only a financial decision. Unfortunately, it's a financial decision in our country. Everything is. So if you have to put a, a cochlear implant for the second year, what is the advantage? Okay. Now, God has given us two years. It is with a purpose. Now, what is this purpose? There are some situations. Let's say 95% of the time, you can manage with one year hearing. With one year, you can manage very well. And I always say in, in Tamil to many parents, you can rule the world with one year. It's quite possible. There are people who have done that. I don't want to mention names, but there has been a gentleman in India who has been, uh, 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 I think you will all guess, but he's been a chief minister. He has been a, a governor, and later on he became the foreign minister, all with one year hearing. So it's quite possible. Now, so what is the purpose of the second year hearing? The purpose is three things. One, if let's say my child has got a hearing implant in the left ear, there is something called a head shadow effect. So somebody talks on the right side softly, they will not pick up, they'll miss out. So then they have to turn the head and direct the microphone to that ear. So that's the first problem. So you always have to make sure that your ear which is hearing is facing the, the speaker. This is not always possible, it's not always easy. So sometimes in schools, in, in institutions, they may miss out on that particular problem. The second problem is the direction of sound. You know, supposing somebody makes a sound, it's coming from back. Is it coming from left side? Is it coming from right side? coming from above, below, you need two ears. With one ear, it's difficult. Then you have to keep changing the head, picking out the sound, and then localizing this. So that's the second very big issue. The third, and this is perhaps the most important, is what we call a cocktail party effect. That is, let's say we are all meeting here. Before the meeting started, all of us were talking. So many people are talking. Now, people with normal hearing, if they want to only listen to what I am saying or what another person is saying, they can easily pick it up. For a cochlear implantee, it's difficult. Because with one ear hearing, not only cochlear implantee, with one ear hearing, it's difficult. They cannot pick out a one person's speech from a lot of sounds. So this is a very important, practical problem in countries like India, where all of us are talking all the time. So we are a noisy group of people. So it becomes a very difficult situation. So then comes the next question. What is the best time to do the other ear implant? Now, the best time, obviously, is the first time, you know, when you do both ears together. And we are doing those kind of implants in children simultaneously both ears. It's great. But if you don't do that, you can still do the other ear one year later, two years later, three years later, four years later, up to seven or six or seven years later, we still see a lot of benefit when we do the second year. And even after seven years, even as late as nine, ten years later, still benefit can be shown. So therefore, this is something that parents have to think about for their children, whether we should now do the second year 
if our finances permit it. Don't think I'm, I'm trying to sell this to you, but you know, it's an important concept which has now come in, and it's very important that I share this with you. It's a purely scientific thought. But if we can afford it, do it. If you cannot afford it, don't break your heart, because with one year also, child will do well. I told you somebody can be foreign minister, then definitely you can achieve a lot with one year also. But if the child is able to have a second year hearing, give it. It's, it's definitely a good gift to give the child. There are a lot of developments which are happening. Of course, electrodes have changed. We have got much better electrodes. We've got finer electrodes, but those are all surgical issues. You know, even with uh, difficult electrodes, we could still do surgeries quite comfortably. But with more modern electrodes, it's like uh, shifting from uh, Maruti to uh, Mercedes Benz. You know, for the surgeon, so it's very comfortable for the surgeon. The second uh, issue really is about speech processors, and the speech processing technologies have really evolved. So newer and newer generation of speech processors have come in, and now, for example, their their latest offering now is is uh, phenomenal. It's a it's an excellent uh, device. So it's worth trying this. Now uh, my advice is don't immediately go and automatically change it because new generation has come. No, but if you're thinking about an upgrade for various reasons, then you know. Talk to the company, give it a try, see how it is, and if you're happy, genuinely happy, that your child feels happy, then go for it. You know, So do it if you're satisfied, not just because something new is coming, because something new is always going to be coming. You know, So it doesn't mean that uh, you know something new comes. It's not like uh, uh, saying, I want to buy the latest uh, uh, mobile phone. You know, It's not like that. So you must be satisfied with it, so give it a try. And I'm sure the company will be more than happy to give you a trial and see how you are doing. And if you're happy, then go for it. But all this is technical talk. The most important thing, I think, is particularly for children, and to some extent adults also, make sure that your process of hearing education continues all your life. This is very important. Because habilitation for the first year, for the children, all of you have gone through that, it's very important. But the process of language acquisition, vocabulary building, and thought process development, all this continues all your life. And keep talking to your child. Keep interacting with your child. Children face problems, small, small problems, but problems they face at school peer pressure, they go to some games, arcade, everywhere they face small problems. Share it with them, talk to them, see that they are not emotionally disturbed. Make sure they understand that they have a problem, but they have overcome the problem. They are better than other children. They are stronger than other children. They are bolder than other children. In short, these are children of God. You know, they are the special children of God. So give them that support, that emotional support, that moral courage to face the world which may not be very sympathetic. But we can give them love and affection and compensate for that. So don't feel upset or restless if they react, particularly when they reach teenage. Many of them are reaching teenage, I can see that. It makes me feel so good. You know, Suddenly I see all of them growing and becoming big. When they're reaching teenage, they have a lot of emotional stress. All children go through, whether they have implant, they don't have implant, it doesn't matter. But when they have a device, the stress becomes compounded, you know, it becomes more. So you must be there to share it with them. Talk to them, you know, ask them what they feel, share it with them. Because this support is very important. It, it's extremely important for them. It will help them to become very strong inside. And that's very important, and I think this is something which I want all of you to uh, particularly share with your children. So this is extremely important. But I'm, I'm really happy, I'm delighted. I've seen so many of you, and I see that every one of you is really doing so well. So what greater reward can I ask for? You know, I can all I can say is a, a big thank you to God for having given me this uh, opportunity in life 
to be of some help to to all of you thank you very much indeed